Good morning and welcome to this week's BVTV. Today I want to focus on credit. We've seen several corrections since February of this year and I thought it would be interesting to look at these episodes from a volatility perspective and also to consider the relative value of credit at the moment. And to answer a common client question, what do we think about the future of credit? I've borrowed this first chart from BNP Paribas. It nicely shows that historically, when volatility spiked, so did credit, and there is contagion between the US and the European markets. You can see from events like Brexit and the volatility crisis in February that investment grade spreads tend to move in sync with volatility. Recent events in Italy, however, have caused some dislocation. European volatility spiked during the risk-off period, as you would expect, but the US markets didn't react nearly as much. The fact that the market barely reacted shows the lack of contagion here. It suggests that US credit markets are being driven by stronger fundamentals. We can see in this chart that US IG and high yield outperformed European credit, indicating that this volatility was confined to Europe and more specifically to Italy and to financials. There's two ways to access the credit markets. Traditionally, using cash bonds or through credit default swaps. These are more liquid and the CDS market tends to react faster to good and bad news than traditional cash bonds. This can be a good way to access the credit markets in periods of increased volatility when we tend to see rapid price action. Some investors will use these to gain credit risk while others will be hedging risk away. Once an opportunity is identified, considering how to access the credit market is important. In early 2016, we saw a risk on period where CDS outperformed cash bonds. There was plenty of opportunities in the credit markets, but cash bonds being slightly less liquid are out of favour versus the CDS. This is due to CDS being a more efficient way of accessing the market for hedging or for tactical credit trading. If we move on to February 2018, the start of the risk off period, we saw a marked spike in CDS as liquid derivative markets reacted quickly to bad news. Cash bonds have outperformed CDS year to date, and this suggests that CDS are relatively cheap compared to those cash bonds. Therefore, if you think that fundamentally the US is in good shape, GDP growth is good, the data is strong and the Fed are tightening appropriately, then the recent credit reprice represents a good opportunity to perhaps add some risk and via the CDS market rather than the cash bonds. So CDS traditionally underperforms in a risk off environment like this one and now offers a reasonably good entry point with some potential good upside. So there's three reasons to be constructive on credit now. One, Following the correction, there now looks to be a better entry point. Two, fundamentals look good. We're coming into the summer lull also when issuance tends to fall and therefore supply reduces. And one more thing, keep an eye on the volatility index and CDS. Why do I say this? Because the relationship between volatility and this economically supportive data seems to have broken down recently. And with so much forward guidance, this is not really surprising. Central bank policy is dominating right now in Europe. It's depressing volatility, but the spreads are not following. When the economic data does start to filter through into the market, there's every reason to be supportive credit. In conclusion, spreads have always been closely correlated to economic growth. In this chart, we see inverted GDP growth shown in the green line against the same triple B rated US IG index. Back in 03 through to 07, we can see that while GDP growth deteriorated, US credit just flatlined and in quite a narrow range. We then see the great financial crisis and the subsequent reaction. If you look from 2016 onwards, we see positive GDP growth once again, coupled with tightening of credit markets. So even though spreads are tight, aside from the little reprice correction that we've seen lately, there is still compelling fundamental data supporting credit going forward. This week, look out for US jobless claims and Eurozone inflation both on Thursday and UK GDP on Friday. Thanks for watching and have a great week.